Hello and welcome to the chat room on CTTN. The chat room is a special online live show which offers people from different backgrounds and sectors to share their thoughts and opinions on a certain topic. And apart from panel discussions, we also take questions from a variety of different social media platforms, including CTTN app, the official website, CTTN official account on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So today, because the、uh, Chinese political season, the two sessions have kicked off, and there's so many topics that are under the spotlight, including. The economic development of the country, the、uh, prevention control measures, and also some issues about Hong Kong, and that's exactly what we'll be talking about. Is the stories and experiences that are relevant with Hong Kong? And joining us、uh, through live streaming, we have six young people, very promising young people, and they're from different walks of life, including、um, among them, including youth leaders, students, and also、um, journalists, just like me. And hello there, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today, and also here in our. Our studio, great. I'm no longer alone today. <laughs> you know,、exactly. I'm not lonely anymore.、I、have two、uh, guests, one beautiful lady and the other very handsome gentleman joining me,、yeah. and they are my actually, <laughs> they are my colleagues. So Tang Bo and Li Jingjing. So say hi to our viewers. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hey, great, great. So we have really full house today. But at the beginning of the show, let's have the、uh, how about let's have the guests who are online introduce to us a little bit about themselves. How about let's start with Zhu Dan because. She's not only my colleague, and we've been knowing each other for many years. And the reason that I especially pick you as the first one to introduce is because I heard you spend over two hundred yuan just for、yeah. us to bought to bought who bought a light and for this special live streaming. So thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. You need to. You're still muted, so you need to、uh, turn up your audio a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Zhou Yun. Hi, everyone. So. Oh, like long long time no see. I mean, this is my first time to see you from this way, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Usually, like we talk, yeah, we talk through live on TV or sometimes, yeah, new media. But this is the first time that we I joined this program, so it's、mm. very my great honor to be here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm Judan. I'm based in Hong Kong for CGTN for over six years. I've witnessed all the changes here in Hong Kong and back in 2019. Uh, protests and also the epidemic in 2020. So yeah, thank you, thank everyone. Thank you so much,、yeah. Shu Dan. Thank you. And by the、nice、way, you look fabulous、yeah. with the new new lighting that you just bought. It, it's so <laughs> worth it, right? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Let's now go to、uh, Noel. So actually, Tom was that he has interviewed you before, and he says so many good things about you. He says you're good looking, your English is so good, and tell us more about yourself. Thank you so much.、Um, yes, this is Noel. I'm the、uh, chairman of Young DAB. So DAB is actually an alliance in Hong Kong to serve the communities and also to serve the local people.、Um, as a young branch of DAB, we have over two thousand young members between the age of eighteen and thirty-five, and we do our best to have like different kind of events, to have different kinds of function to、mm-hmm. to help young people to success in different areas. So it's my honor to be here today. It's our honor to have you with us. Just by the way, do you still remember my colleague Tang Bo? Have interviewed you before? We have just forgot him completely. <laughs> hey, long time <laughs> no see, Noel. Long time no see. Of course, I remember this handsome gentleman for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think he just pretend to still remember you. You know, that's <laughs>、so、still polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just being a gentleman. How about let's turn to another gentleman, Dominic. You're one of the few familiar faces here because you were a guest on the chat room before. For the debating, and today you're here for a discussion. Are you ready for that? Um, of course, I'm ready because I have another dose. To- I don't have another dose today, and it is so nice to see you again, Jomi. <laughs> it's just so gorgeous today. <laughs> yeah, and every day, I guess. Oh my God, I'm so flattered. And- Let- uh huh. Let's go to another、uh, uh, okay. gorgeous lady, Cherry. Actually, Cherry has over one million followers on. Like different social media platforms, including Douyin, Weibo, etc. And also, I I love her video because it seems that almost every video, every video, it starts with something like "Hello, hi, 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 Cherry, hello, la. hello, <laughs> hi, Cherry." Hello, That's how you、I'm、always、Cherry. start your video, <laughs> right? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, and、uh, thank you for you for having me. And it's nice to meet you all via Zoom. I guess some of you have met me through social media platform. I'm I'm vlogger and I share my vlogs on TikTok, Xiao Hong Shu, Weibo, and Bilibili.、Mm-hmm. So I started sharing my video since 2019, and now I have 1.5 million followers on TikTok and、mm-hmm. 210,000、wow. in the Xiao Hong Shu. 
So I'm really honored, and I also like to take this chance to extend my thanks. Thank you all. That's great. It's great to have you with us. Wow, 1.5 million. That's a lot. And I assume that so many of her followers are watching our show today. Yeah, absolutely. A lot yeah. of pressure, huh? A lot, a lot of so pressure. stressful. I know. I have to be so careful with the questions I'm going to ask here. You know, oh my goodness. Okay, now I'm sweating. <laughs> okay, now let's go to Zijin. So Zijin, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, sorry, you are still muted. So you also need to turn oh, on your okay, audio. Oh, okay, okay. Now yeah. it's good. Is it right now? Okay, yes. okay. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Chen Zijin. I'm from the mainland, uh, but I studied in the uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong and uh, have been working in an insurance company since then. So I think I probably can share some. Uh, uh, due to the pandemic, I'm staying in Shenzhen now. So I think I probably can share some intercity issues with you guys. Thank great, you. Great. We really look forward to it. And now, last but not least, let's go to Zhuang Yan. That's a really special name, right? Thank you, um, but I'm not serious as my name is. Um, <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> uh, I'm from uh, I'm from uh, ma- Chinese mainland, and I'm currently studying PCLL program at City University of Hong Kong. Basically, this is a program for like uh, 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 if you want to become a lawyer, then you have to get that certificate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I'm expected to uh, graduate in June this year. Wow! So, are you going to be become a lawyer? As you wish. Hopefully, I, I yeah. hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's great. And in the future, like if we have any legal issues we need to consult, you can provide us with some free services. Will that be the case? <laughs> or with some discount? Yeah, some discount course. to Tangbo, but like free services for me and Jingjing. <laughs> Is that a deal? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, like all of us, like we have experiences for 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 you guys. You have experiences of living and working on Hong Kong, in Hong Kong. We have the experience of visiting and traveling in Hong Kong. So let's start w- with this handsome gentleman here. Yes, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, what's your like unique memory or some of the stories that you want to share with us about Hong Kong? Well,、um, you know, Hong Kong, of course, is regarded as a metropolis, but you may not know that.、Um, Out of this over 1,000 kilometers of land,、uh, about three quarters is countryside. So,、mm-hmm. if you are an avid hiker, then that's you're, you're of the best luck in,、yeah. uh, living and working in Hong Kong. Because,、um, like Hong Kong has over like 50 hiking trails、uh, yeah. that you can explore,、mm-hmm. and、uh, you never really have to travel so far to put yourself into nature. It,、mm-hmm. There are just About a few subway stations or bus rides away, and、um, for there,、um, I think that, that、uh, one of such places that I strongly recommend、mm-hmm. is, of course, Victoria Peak. That might be a little bit old school, but I have to say that's <laughs> how I really think about it. Yes, because、um, you know、uh, there's a lot of pathways you can explore on there, and the, one of the best one I think it is、um, it is called the Circle Work. Which loops around the peak, and you、wow. can, you know, explore some woods and even some waterfalls. And most importantly, you can have spectacular views of the Hong Kong skyline.、Yeah. That's the place that I impressed me the most. Oh, that's not only the place that impressed you the most. I think I have. We have one guest here who also think that Victoria Harbour is one of the most impressive sites to his memory. So, Dominic, tell us more. Yeah, sure. I think the Victoria Harbour is the prettiest. Place in the world, as I think, you know, the first time I've been to the Victoria's Harbour, just like you know, the Great Gatsby, the Great Gatsby first time met Daisy, you know, you know, <laughs> how excited when I saw the Victoria Harbour. It is just, it is my goddess. And every time I felt sad, up, I will go there and have a walk, then I will just feel fine. And you know, there's a lot of busker, buskers, young singers that they present their show in the by the bank. Mm-hmm. So it is good experience for you to walk through the the whole Victoria Bank. So you just fell in love with Victoria Harbour, the place. Not like you fell in love with a girl at that place, just to be sure, right? Seriously. <laughs> well, you never know. That can be. Oh、probably. yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we never know. <laughs> But yeah, let me ask Cherry because Cherry, I know you were raised in Sichuan and、uh, Shenzhen, and then、yeah. you went back to Hong Kong. So I thought that your memory and your special experiences of Hong Kong would be something like so. I don't know. It's about the beautiful thing there. It's about、uh, shopping. But you know what Cherry said was the most、uh, like unique experience for her? It's the snacks that she could buy in Hong Kong. Why is that? 
is so rare. <laughs> I must say snacks because we can buy various snacks from all over the world in Hong Kong.、Mm-hmm. I remember uh, my co- uh, my classmate in college who lives in United Kingdom now asked me for help to mail some Japanese snacks from Hong Kong because she、oh. couldn't buy them in UK. That's cool. But what's your personal favorite? In terms of food、um, in Hong Kong, except food, I think、uh, many comic sticks are very cheap and tax-free, and my、uh, friends, like girls, really like it. Yeah, just like my colleague Zhu Dan, I think it's good to be working in Hong Kong, but it's also bad because I think it's really hard to to save any money. Zhu Dan always say, "Oh, look, I bought this new dress. <laughs> I bought this <laughs> lotion." So it's a great place for shopping, right, Dan Dan? Is this a private conversation or just? On oh the air no! Now? So sorry. It's live streaming, babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, because in、uh, in Hong Kong, everybody knows that、um, it's tax free. So we've got lots of international brands here, and so、um, every girl would love it, or including men. I think just go shopping everywhere. Just there are so many shops on the street. Every every day, just、oh, go out any time. You should go. You can just go shopping, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> so、yeah. of course, this is Hong Kong. And、uh, by the way,、uh, Tambo just mentioned that the、um, hiking is very good in Hong Kong. Actually, Tambo, do you remember what, when was your last time hiking in Hong Kong, and who did you go with? Oh, who yeah, did you go、um, with? Yeah, well, back in 2019, with you,、oh, my dear Judine, we had a great time <laughs> there hiking. So maybe you were there just to help Judan take photos, right? Because、yes. every time Judan went to hike or to jog, she always posts photos on the. Yeah, Judan、uh, was like our tour guide.、Uh, Not just two of us, <laughs>、uh, many of us together. Okay, it's、And、good just, to clarify that. Yes, I must. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep that as a secret. If it's two of us or just with others, yeah, I'll keep that as a secret. Okay. That's yeah. That's a lot of information <laughs> okay, for the live so, streaming I mean, today. Yeah, but what about other yeah other stuff that you love、no, you kidding, love about、yeah. Hong Kong? Yeah. Yeah, actually, well, Hong Kong is known for many things: its rich cultural heritage, dynamic、um, uh, food, archite- architecture mix of old and new, and of course that iconic skyline you guys just mentioned. Yeah, and、uh, I but I think but I think.、Um, our, yeah, just like I said, our concrete jungle is also wrapped in. Lush verdant hills with、mm-hmm. magnificent islands, and the best way is yeah. Just think, just, just really <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, think about it. Like、um, the nature, it's just a few bus rides away from you. You from don't the look like、jungle. a person that belongs to nature. You look like the person that belongs to big cities, right? No, no, that that's not to, true. Like, so what know, I'm trying to say is that it's really rare. The scene is really rare、uh, around the world. Like the other cities that we think of would be Rio de Janeiro. Or Cape Town in South Africa, and then、yeah. it's Hong Kong. So this is another major reason why I love to stay. And you're just saying because you're、it. so good looking, you just fit in like anywhere, like big cities, the nature, small yeah. villages. You know, yeah, yeah I'm just well, so jealous of that. Well, integrated into anything. What about Jingjing? Because I know you're a big fan of movies. Yeah. So maybe that's the good reason for you to go back to Hong Kong and do I don't know trace back all those places for shooting the movies. Is that、exactly. the case for you? Yeah. Because for me, I grew up in the age for like the golden era for Hong Kong movies, TV dramas, yes,、yeah. music. So I think maybe for a lot of us who born in the eighties, nineties, we grew we up in the time. We have some here actually. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we were raised listening to those music, right? Yeah, yeah. And we watch so many TV dramas. So yeah,、uh, he doesn't、they? know his own. I know. <laughs> it's, it's not the same generation. It's beyond your time. I'm just too young to know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> But you know,、um, so I traveled to Hong Kong many times.、Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I went to for business trip as well. But I think I love、uh, just for tourism. So I have the time to go to all the places that I saw while I was a kid in all the movies and TV dramas.、Right. So I would just take the subway or mini bus、uh, because mini bus is a crucial thing in、yes. many movies. So Suba. <laughs> so Suba. I, sometimes I just take a photo and at the Hong Kong movie theater, or I just go to the Causeway Bay, take some photos, pretend I'm the gangster boys, the Gua Zai. So <laughs> <laughs> because just influence our childhood so much. When you finally go there, you want to search all the places. That you saw in movies and TV dramas,、yeah. and just 
pretend I'm the movie star. This sounds like a narcissist, but it's the feeling no, you finally yeah, got the photos that you saw in your childhood. Yeah, but let's ask Noel because you were you were born and raised in Hong Kong. So like for me and Jingjing, we were raised in Chinese mainland. So when we go to Hong Kong, you know, we would like to experience something that if we have next never experienced before. But maybe for you, do you just take those for granted? It's like oh, <laughs> these are just the neighborhoods that they grow up, or it's also kind of overwhelming to you. I actually really like Hong Kong. I lived in Canada for over ten years, and I decided to move back to Hong Kong because I really like. Like, I completely agree with all other guesses were saying how um, Hong Kong is super convenient. You can go hiking, you can go to, you know,、um, the sea. You can do a lot of things within like an hour because it's like just super convenient.、Yeah. And it's also Hong Kong. It's very safe place. So、um, if you walk along on the street at light time after midnight. You, you you won't worry about anything. You you still feel very safe on the street. So. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Well, Hong Kong style restaurant that where you can have a lot of food that it's like、uh, mixing like you know Chinese and also Western ingredients. Yeah. The good thing, really good thing about Hong Kong is like it's really an international city. Because it could combine, you know, the east with the west. It's a weird, you know, the、um, the ancient history meets the、uh, the features. So you can get almost everything. Yeah, food, Jing Jing just mentioned the about the movies. the movies, and I want to talk about my. But first... you are so good looking. Like when you walk <laughs> on the street, is there people like the agent that came to you and say, "Oh, you're so gorgeous. Do you want to be a movie star?" They must be right. Tom exactly. Yeah, I'm very flattered in the show. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. So, but what I'm trying to say is that my first impression of Hong Kong、mm-hmm. is those police officers dispatched from the UK before Hong Kong was returned to China,、mm-hmm. and that came from lots of Hong Kong police and gangster movies back in the 1980s and 1990s.、Mm-hmm. So this kind of a colonial background, I think, gave Hong Kong. A very unique and sophisticated、um, fusion, just like you said, the、yeah. fusion of the West and East culture, and、yeah. it not only left you know some、uh, traditional Chinese cultures, but also kind of experienced、um, the baptism of Western cultures, and、yeah. that forming a very unique local culture. And I、yeah. really I love totally to, to get、yeah. you know emerged into it. It、right. surprised me because people. Think Hong Kong is very international city. It's、mm-hmm. a concrete jungle, very international. Foreigners、yeah. always say it's so convenient to live and travel in Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you have to notice it's so international, but also so traditional. I agree. I, I really agree. It's kind of very local to to some degree. Yeah, the people who have lived there for generations. Yes. Yeah. Not just like the language, Cantonese, like traditional ch- Chinese,、uh, but I think in many customs, like people's、uh, habits, it's still they have more traditions,、uh, worshiping their ancestors.、Um, In、They're、terms very, of living, like they have、yeah. more tradition than people like me from the they north. They pay extra,、yeah. I think, compared with us, they pay extra attention to those traditions, to those festivities, and to yeah, those sometimes suspicious,、um, I don't know, tradition or something like that. Yeah. But at the same time, just because of the fusion of the different cultures, that they are very easily to accept variety. They're、mm-hmm. more open-minded. Open-minded or, yeah. to the world. Yeah. Yeah, let's ask Zhuang Yan. Let's see if our guest is back. Because now、uh, I think we have some problem with the signal. Let's see, ask Zhuang Yan. Because Zhuang Yan, you were raised in the Chinese mainland, and then you、uh, went to Hong Kong to study, and hopefully become a lawyer in the near future. So, what is your impression of Hong Kong? Is there something that is different compared with you, what you imagined or thought before? Um. Yes.、Uh... Previously, you know, people usually say, "Well, Hong Kong is a cultural desert." Well, but it's, it is not at all. When I came back,、uh, when I came first came to Hong Kong, it was in、uh, 2015, and actually at that time the Globe was、uh, visiting Hong Kong, and so I was so fortunate to watch Hamlet performed by them.、Mm-hmm. That was that was some like really unique and surprising experience for me because previously I just、uh, read the play. Um, I never had that experience, like、uh, the opportunity to 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 watch them and, and to watch them perform them, right? So uh, basically, uh, if we back back to China, back to my、uh, hometown, it can't be imaginary for me to like experience such a、uh, great play and show. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about Zijin? 
You have so many. I believe you have so many、um, friends from the Chinese mainland that would go to Hong Kong and they would turn to you to buy some insurance, right? So why is it so、yes. attractive to you? Ah,、uh, you mean Hong Kong to yeah, me? Yeah, why living and working in Hong well, Kong is very attractive to you? Yeah, I think as everybody mentioned, I think the、um, yeah the atmosphere, the mixing culture is very interest uh, uh, like attracts me more. Because like New York and other international cities, they are more Western oriented. But for Hong Kong, it's like more a combination of Western culture and the the Chinese culture or the Eastern culture. So I think this is very different from other、uh, like other big cities. Like I studied in the U.S. Uh, uh, in co- a college,、mm-hmm. and、uh, so、uh, and after that, I want to try something like different. So I choose Hong Kong because I think here. Like you can try more, uh, like a urbanization,、uh, like a combination of urbanization and、uh, um, nature, l- like the local localization also. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah nature. like the nature. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's what my colleagues really like, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But th- does it really feel stressful to be living in Hong <laughs>、oh, yeah. Kong? Because I hear so many,、uh, especially from my young, from my young friend, they say it's really, really stressful to be living in Hong Kong because the peer pressure is like.、Ex- You know, it's tremendous.、Yes. Do you feel the same way?、Uh, yes, like the housing,、uh, the 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 house, the, the house price,、yeah. and、uh, even the like the traffic, the traffic fee. Like you need to take the subway. Like in Beijing, I study in Beijing. Like in Beijing, the subway almost、uh, always just it takes、uh, two or three yuan. Now,、uh, now it's、R&D. a little bit more、uh, expensive than that. Hong Kong, it always. <laughs> but still. <laughs> <laughs> but compared to Hong Kong, it's like nothing. Yeah, but Hong Kong is always like ten or maybe more. And people、yeah. uh, like you al- always talk about the snacks in Hong Kong, but it's also expensive. So everything in Hong Kong is expensive. It's hard for us to save money. But um, but um, uh, in other ways, I think we can、uh, spend the money in. A good way in Hong Kong, so I think it's kind of different in the mainland of China. Yeah. yeah, let's let's turn to Zhu Dan. So Zhu Jin said it's very stressful <laughs> as the young people to be living and make a living in Hong Kong. What about you? Do you feel more stressful when you were working with us, or do you feel more stressful working in Hong Kong? But you, at least you, you, you're, you, like you're more,、yeah. you're happier. Like when you work with me and Tang Bo and Jing Jing right here, do you miss us at all? Yeah, of course I miss you all. Do you want to join me in Hong Kong? Oh、I、no, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like、uh, Tumble was here in 2019, and yeah, so it's been a、uh, over a year now. But it was just like、uh, yesterday, right? So、yeah. we were here to cover the protest, everything here, and yeah, time flies. And oh, okay. So tell about、uh, talking about the、um, stress or. The young、um, people, the, like the condition that, for the young people,、oh, young people. the competition,、yeah. like the so opportunities, all, okay. everything. Yeah. So first of all,、mm-hmm. from the light, I told you that it's like a two hundred or two hundred twenty-two for the single light. <laughs> this is small light, but I checked、uh, in Chinese mainland, it's only like about one hundred or one hundred fifty. So the price is higher. So from this small detail, yeah, that we can tell that、one. the living expense. Yeah, the living expense is really high in Hong Kong.、Mm. So、um, the although the average income is higher, but the living expenses is much much higher, and it's kind of Hong Kong is one of the most expensive cities in the world already. So of course, so、um, okay. So talking about housing is、mm. very important and pressing issues for young people. I mean,、um, the the salary、um, cannot. It's not enough to buy、uh, to buy apartment or to、uh, sometimes even rent apartment, and some of those young people need to、uh, share the、uh, apartment. Of course, that's already good, and some of them still need to live in subdivided homes. So that's kind of a big challenge.、Yeah. And the second thing is that I think for young people, some of the young people, young Hong Kong people, they do not see. They think they do not see the future. The future because、um, in their education. Um, they don't know more about Chinese mainland.、Mm-hmm. Um, all they know about Chinese mainland is、uh, it's quite negative, you know.、Yeah. And Chinese history is not there. It's not. It's not a compulsory subject in their education. So all they know about Chinese mainland is,、uh, like, say, in 1980s、mm-hmm. when China is not that developed already.、Uh, de- developed. So,、uh, so the challenge is 
they don't know where to go or in the future. I mean, um, so we need to uh, provide them more opportunities to go to Chinese mainland to see if there are uh, any like chances for them to work or to live, right? Actually, we all we all live in Chinese mainland for so many years. Mm-hmm. So we think that Chinese mainland is great. It's developing so fast. So yeah, so yeah. I think these are Hong Kong, young Hong Kong people's challenges right. now. It's the kind of you know the sense of belonging among the young people that's really challenging. But Judan, before I move to the next guest, I have something to tell you. You know, there's a good way to make some money. Is you can sell your light to Tang Bo after this live streaming because you can see like his face looks so red now, right? I don't know why. He, he needs a light. <laughs> that's why because you need the light. You need okay. to buy it from no. Judan. Only LED light. Could, yes, then it's because it goes on. Yeah. Because you're gonna be very popular even yeah. in this year. This year. <laughs> that's yeah. a good. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah, you'll become maybe you'll become just and, like cherry and addict. Uh huh. Yes. Go on. You can continue. Hi. Cherry is professional. Cherry has a three life there. She <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe Cherry can. Yeah, can just borrow one to yeah, you. Yeah, Cherry. I think Cherry just. Just follow up with the uh, the topic that Judan was talking about, <laughs> the communication between mm-hmm. the um, young people from exactly. the Chinese mainland and Hong Kong. I think Cherry bears a, a great responsibility to promote this exchange <laughs> and communication, don't you think? Yeah. What's your plan? <laughs> yeah, tell us, because Cherry, we, we love your um. videos. It's like, hello, hi, Cherry. And then you introduce to us about hello, your hello. living condition in Hong Kong, like everything, the food you eat in Hong Kong, like your interaction with your sister, everything. So why do you want to make those uh, videos, especially at the very beginning? What really motivated you to do that? <laughs> uh. I just want to uh, share my life to uh, Chinese mainland because I live in Hong Kong. Uh, just like I recently joined in the super fast event of Hong Kong Tourism Board, I just hope to show Hong Kong in multiple uh, perspectives. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. why I think uh, um, uh, many excellent vol- vloggers in Chinese mainland and many creative YouTubers in Hong Kong. I think we can communicate with each other more actively online and create more value. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's, like, I, there's uh, clearly... Especially when I shot a, a, shot, a short video. Mm-hmm. So because there's this can kind you, of a gap... Can you hear? Yes, we yeah, can right. hear you. So there's this yeah, kind of a I gap a... of misunderstanding um, sometimes between Hong Kong and also uh, okay. the mainland. So I think it's, you know, vloggers like uh, Cherry who can really help us to enhance this kind of communication between the people in, you know, the two yeah. regions, right? Mm-hmm. So what about Jingjing? Because I know mm-hmm. you're also a yeah, vlogger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned the misunderstanding. I totally agree. There's, uh, to some extent, there's some misunderstanding between young people in Chinese mainland and in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. not just... Uh, one way it's like vice versa. Hong Kong yeah. young people have mis- have some mis- misunderstanding to young people in China, mm-hmm. and uh, Chinese people also misunderstand some young Hong Kongers. So, like for example, I think just last year I went to Hong Kong and talked to interviewed three young Hong Kongers. They were born and raised in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. good-looking boys just like Tang Bo. <laughs> And also the guests <laughs> joining us online. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. They're uh, good looking, they're tall, they, uh, stud- uh, they went to university in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. But you know what they do? What, they do what, they, what kind of profession they chose after graduation? No idea. They chose to be farmers. So they graduated from Hong Kong University and then came to Guangzhou wow. and went to a village uh, to grow vegetables. And oh, I was like, wow. uh, why? That's so they un- are trying to use... Yeah. yeah. Was that benefiting? To- uh, not in the first few years. So I asked them why, because they are using the scientific knowledge learned from the university, trying to use a very modern, efficient way to use combining growing fish and vegetable together. Mm-hmm. So they are trying to improve the way of uh, for for farmers. And yeah. they will so they st- actually they started their own business. Yes. So the as uh, they are, farmers, but as it's farmers. like a, not traditional way. Yeah, but I think that in the first few years as the entrepreneur, yeah. you have to just spend your whole days in the yeah. farmland, not seeing anyone. On the field. Yeah, on yeah. the field. So, and w- ask me why you are. You look so young-looking. You should be like in the in the 
office buildings. Yeah, yeah. They're white collar jobs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But they said because especially in Hong Kong in the city, um, fresh vegetables and fruits are mm. not as much as like as as we have here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they can find a way to grow m more vegetables mm -hmm. and sell that to Hong Kong, it will benefit Hong Kong people. Yeah. So they come to Guangzhou and find a way because the land is cheaper and there are more because, policies. And also because now they have the Greater Bay Area. So for yeah. those people who start their own business as entrepreneurs, there'll be some subsidies, there'll be some preferential exactly. policies. The, ba yeah. the policy is just really beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. So they, And they are willing to give the young people like them a, a huge land opportunity for them to to investigate, to try to ex, uh, experience whether they will fail, whether they success yeah. uh, be successful. So, turn out it's it's getting there. Seeing the result now, it's getting they, there. Yeah, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. So, did you taste like the the fruit <laughs> or the vegetables that they well, grow? Well, I did pick some vegetables, lettuce. Is it and, good? Yeah, it's really good. So it's like organic lettuce. Very organic. Mm. So these are that's the why you people. look so beautiful today, oh because you gosh. eat those like, <laughs> <laughs> but not as pink as, uh, as as red <laughs> yeah. as tumble. <laughs> know, just, so okay, yeah, they are very uh, adventurous, very ambitious, yeah. young Hong Kongers. Mm -hmm. So I really wish like more Chinese mainland people to get to know those young Hong Kongers. Yeah. Um, they are and vice versa. And they also yeah, that's the other course. way around. Because now, uh, just as Jing Jing, those are not just like few people. They have an increasing number of young people who are born and raised in Hong Kong and then they would like to move to the Chinese mainland for, for job or for living. Mm -hmm. So, and we have some people who, who moved from Hong Kong to Beijing for study. That's Dominic, right? So Dominic, why? Why, why are you here? It's like your parents, they don't want to see you in Hong Kong or just like you want to, you prefer to to, to, to be studying in, in Beijing? Uh, no, actually, I, I actually I want to study law faculty in Hong Kong as, you know, that, is it? Yes, we can uh, how, hear you. How to say is Yan, Yan, Yan. Yes. Uh, I, I apply, apply for Hong Kong U Law faculty, but unfortunately I lose. Oh, um, but he gets no, it, but you uh, lost it. <laughs> so you were competitors. Oh, yeah, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but the second reason it is, uh, it is very complicated. Like one day I was all duty home. I was taking train home with my sister and I was sitting in a first class compartment. But all of a sudden, uh, like uh, five black shirts rush into the compartment and hijack the whole train. I oh see God. those fine people, that's well suited people. They just can't dare to speak. Those who believe in Hong Kong value, who believe in freedom, just do the violence and no one dare to say, or else they will get exposure to tens of thousands of rioters. Then I was extremely outrageous and shocked, and I can't believe. It is for Hong Kong. It happened in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So to find out the reason I study political science in Beijing. Mm -hmm. and how are you liking it? Is it so, so far so good? Yeah, so far so good. And I learned a lot, a lot of therapy. Like, like my professor said, it, Hong Kong, it shouldn't be just a geographical point. It is about, not about single race languages. It is about faith. And what we need to do now is to reestablish our image to our mainland compatriots. Mm -hmm. That's great. So we have Dominic, uh, who was born and raised in Hong Kong and now studying in Beijing. But we also have the mainlanders who now are studying in Hong Kong. So Zhuang Yan, why do you want to study in Hong Kong instead of, I don't know, uh, like studying here in the Chinese mainland or go to some other countries, the US, the UK? Maybe it's just because you got the offer and Dominic didn't get it, so you have to take it, right? <laughs> well, obviously, because I got the offer. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, uh, but uh, you see, Hong Kong is uh, previously, well, and it's still famous for its uh, rule of law, and it is famous for its order and prosperity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think there is some really um, interesting and um, uh, attractive points uh, in, in Hong Kong's legal system, as well as uh, in its laws. So uh, that's why I came here. I okay. want to uh, learn something and I want to think like, because I'm, uh, I, I come from a Chinese mainland yeah. and I uh, kind of like familiar with the Chinese mainland's uh, legal system. So uh, I can have a, like by 
perspective uh, to 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 study the two um, systems and compare with uh, compare them and to find some new uh, or interesting points uh, or ideas in mm-hmm. future. And after you graduate, I'm so curious. Uh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just I'm just so curious. Like a lot of people say, Hong Kong's legal system is just a colonial, uh, colonial league system. So. People say we should abolish the whole legal system in Hong Kong, or oh else my. some people say it is all about wings and gowns that people wear in the courtroom. So do you think should we just abolish the wings? That's a really and tough question, Dominic. You're taking it as a I'm, revenge I'm just, I'm for not curious. getting the offer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> it's it's supposed to be no, like no, no. a I'm very not, happy so dialogue. Curious, like... You're asking him this really tough question, just trying to ruin his day because you get he did he get the offer and you didn't. No. <laughs> That's but so it's unfair. A good question, though. It's no, no, good, I... I really want to hear. Okay, the Zhang Yan, do you have the answer? If you have the answer, you can say it. But if it's too hard, it's okay. I allow you to uh, to abolish it. Yes, I can, I can write. I can write several papers for that. Oh, see, Dominic, it just yeah, it's just such a complicated question. John Yan needs to I'm write sorry, like the, so I, many papers apologies. to explain. My apologies. Let's go. No, let's go to Noel. Oh my goodness! Now this is turning into no, a computation just, field. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're so competitive, right, Dominic? I have my apologies. No, it's fine. So let's go to no Alex. No, 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 I'm so curious about how the Hong Kong lawyer thinks. Yeah, and after you know, when Zhuang Yun finishes his paper, he can send it to you, and maybe you can learn something from uh from your competitor, <laughs> right? Zhuang Yun, do remember to CC uh, uh, Dominic after you finish your thesis, okay? Yeah. You have sure, to. Of course. You have to win. I'm with you. I'm on your side, okay? You have to win. <laughs> Let's go to Noel because Noel, just as we said, we have people like Zhuang Yan and also、uh, Dominic. We we have like people in the Chinese mainland studying and working in Hong Kong, and also the other way around. So this is kind of increasing the flow of people of exchanges between the two parts. So how how are you witness this? And are you saying like increasing number of young people who are now trying to seek more opportunities in the Chinese mainland as well? Yes, totally agree. You know,、um, given that the transportation is getting more convenient, given that like、um, there are more communication between mainland Chinese and also the Hong Kong Chinese,、mm-hmm. uh, I think it's a great opportunities for Hong Kong people to try to get more understanding on what happened、um, in the developments of mainland China. Because、uh, I do see there are lots of young people in Hong Kong. They have a They have misunderstanding of China. They didn't know what's going on in China right now. How、mm-hmm. the development is doing.、Uh, One. So it's very important. Like、um, uh, we we actually send a lots of student every year to China to do in、uh, to to mainland China to do internship, to for them to actually get to know what the life look like.、Um, and also there are lots of way more opportunity in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a city that focus a lot on finance and banking and tourism. Yeah. But for some other some other topic, for example, like engineering, for example, like aerospace or any other like science. There's actually way more opportunity in China, in mainland China, and especially in the Greater Bay Area. Like, there's a lots of,、um, as you just mentioned, right? There's a lots of sponsorship, a lots of opportunity that provided by both governments for Hong Kong、uh, young people to to actually try to start their own business or to study to live in、uh, the Greater Bay Area. Yeah. So thank you so much. And、uh, when we are. Having all those interesting dialogues, we have so many followers on different social media platforms posting their comments, and we have some follower on Facebook say, "I haven't been to Hong Kong, but wish to be there someday." And some say that I'm your number one fans. You guys should keep it okay. Love you guys. Love you too. And good to see you, Hong Kong. And also, some say I love their movie industry, just like Jing Jing. And also, Ken Kennedy said that I once visited Hong Kong in 1999, and it was a pleasure and wonderful experience. I love Kulong. And we also have some、uh, media platform、uh, uh, followers from YouTube saying Hong Kong is my favorite place and is in my bucket list in the future. I'm going to visit that place. Much love from Nepal. Oh, thank you so much. We still have more to come. So for those who are joining us on different social platforms, you can leave your comments and also your questions on those platforms. And we really welcome your inputs. Let's go back to our discussion. So how is it going so far? It really remind me or remind both of you those happy memories and stories. 
place in Hong Kong. But some of them, I know Tom Bogus, you went there last year, I'm oh, sorry, in 2019 to cover the protest. Yes. So some of them is not that pleasant, to be honest. It's very sad memories. Um, yes, I was there in Hong Kong back in 2019 covering the social unrest mm -hmm. uh, lasting from the summer to the end of the year 2019. And there was one time that me and my colleagues were kind of surrounded by protesters as we were reporting on a protest in Charter Garden. Mm -hmm. And we were um, mistaken for a plain clothes police officers from the Chinese mainland. Yeah, because they're so because, good looking. No, <laughs> simply, and, and simply also because, because were we were talking blue. in Mandarin oh. and I was wearing a blue shirt. shirt. Yeah, you're already that. tall. You already stand out among the crowd. Yeah, kind yeah. of, but I don't know. Um, Yes. And so, also with uh, our cameraman, it's like even taller. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, finally, at the end, fortunately, we managed to get out this, get out of the the tension. And mm -hmm. I don't want to go too much into the details, but I got a little bit you no know, mild PTSD that I got really easily to get nervous when every time when I went out from hotel to places to work in Hong Kong to report, especially those places with so many people like hospitals, shopping malls, harbor mm -hmm. areas, and city center district, business districts, mm -hmm. I got nervous very easily. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, given this backdrop of unrest, social unrest, I can still sense that people there were doing all they can to 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 maintain their uh, everyday lives, stay strong, stay positive, and stay mm -hmm. confident. Yeah. And that's the reason why I saw so many people in the city gardens, business districts, especially during weekends, mm -hmm. under such difficult time. Yeah, yeah um, and and that's that's the thing that really impresses me a lot, and it highlights the resilience of the city during the difficult times. I, mm -hmm. I have some statistics, some mm -hmm. numbers, mm -hmm. that um, from May to October in two thousand last year, two thousand twenty, the city have saw um, so a, a, a continued inflow of funds and it took in like a nearly 17 US dollars um, from the market. Mm -hmm. So it's still a very vibrant market in the world at that time, yeah. even right now. Yeah. So That's yeah, the city's strong. Don't yeah. worry about that. It's still very resilient, even though it has went through so many challenges. Let's go to Judan because Judan, I think what Tambo has just described is part of your memory because you were there as well and you experienced even much more protest and also those challenges and so what, what what is your impression of those and what do you think that as just as Tang Bo said that could make Hong Kong recover regain its momentum and also go back to its resilience yeah um, I when I uh look back, I was kind of upset back in 2019, early 2020, as I covered the whole protest that lasted for months. I feel mm -hmm. Hong Kong's young people did misunderstand, did misunderstand about China. Can you imagine, like I said, China's history is not a compulsory subject in school, and all they know about China is not negative. And yeah, for example, um, just like a town, board, a town board's experience, and also mine, some radical pro young protesters are, are I think they're like a brainwashing school. We national TV station reporter are from the police department of China or Hong Kong or, or from or national security department of China. And uh, once we take a closer up a close photo of them, they will think I'm going to send to the police or they will be arrested eventually. While I myself um, was surrounded for I think for three times during that during a uh, few months protest and I was recognized on the street and my phone my phone was even grabbed by a protester. Yeah. Um, that was really dangerous. Because, at because that time. They, yeah. Yes. It was dangerous I think. Mm -hmm. Um but at that time I didn't feel like a scary or whatever. But I mean at the end when I come back home I just feel my legs are shaking, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, re it's really dangerous because when you are surrounded when you were surrounded by the others and you can't explain like they don't trust you. They don't believe you. They think they you take you you took photos of them, and then you're gonna send the photos to the police department or the National Security Bureau of China. That's a mm -hmm. there's a huge gap about the understanding between each also other. Also, a trust deficit. So, uh, there. but yeah. Uh, yes, I want to say so. Like we're actually far away from any police department or national. We're just security reporters Bureau. here, we're right? Really, yeah, who went there to cover the news? We're just reporters. 
Yeah. So Tang yeah, Bo and Zhu Dan, they were reporters at the front line to cover the news. But we also have Zhuang Yan. I think you study in uh, City University, which there were ongoing protests before, right? So you were actually on the front line to witness all those. How did you feel? Did you feel concerned and like afraid of those at that moment? Well, uh, I remember there was there was one day I was studying in the library, and suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, there was a fire alarm, and it was so like so weird. And then later on, I just uh, we we just uh, were uh, uh, informed by the university that some people uh, came into the campus, and then uh, they they triggered the fire alarm, and so at the time, the lifts and the classrooms were all flooded, and we had to like uh, leave the uh, campus as soon as possible. Uh, so back to those days, we were so afraid, mm -hmm. and I have to admit, although I'm an adult, uh, but yeah. I I cannot, I was not uh, like uh, for sure whether um, my personal safety could be secured. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to those days, you know, uh, there was no uh, any like access control at the entrance of the campus, so people can came uh, came in um, uh, freely. So uh, yeah. And later on, I think uh, soon later, um, the the university just uh, in, uh, equipped those uh, access con control uh, system, and as well as uh, like uh, equipped with um, uh, some safeguards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those, that yeah. said, I want to add something. Mm -hmm. Even though at that moment was we saw like chaos, protests, and destructions here and, and there in the a, city, yeah. but still uh, the major business activities and financial services and you know the Freshly people's everyday school. lives were in yeah. general kept in order. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why I, you know, I said I, I saw the resilience. Of yeah. the city during the and difficult actually, times. Actually, I asked so many people, especially those Hong Kongers, about you know where does this kind of resilience came from? And some local people they tell me it's something called the Line Rock Spirit. It's something that you, that's kind of unfamiliar to us, right? Yeah, I don't but, know much about that. I really want to know what that exactly is. Yeah, that? so Line I don't know. Let's rock. ask those people who are now living and working in Hong Kong. What is this line rock spirit that could really, really uh, help people to, I don't know, get their morale back and, and to keep, the keep them moving? So, um, so Zijin, I think you've been working in Hong Kong. So do you have an idea about what this um, line rock spirit is? Uh, you need to oh, turn. Sorry, yes. sorry. I think the signal is a little okay. unstable. So, can you repeat the, yeah, sure. the question? Yeah, we were talking sorry. about what really gets the people in Hong Kong to go through oh, all those sorry. challenges. Can you hear me now? Okay, maybe we can turn to Cherry. First. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, now you can you can hear me, right? Okay. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, great. So we we're talking about what could really help people in Hong Kong to get through all those challenges and to be one. And some people tell me it's something called the line rock spirit. Because we three, we were raised here in the Chinese mainland. We don't have much experience yeah. and understanding about that. So can, do you have an idea and can share with uh, a little bit of that with us? Yes, I think uh, before I came to Hong Kong, actually, I didn't get to know a lot about Hong Kong because I'm from the northern China and uh, the culture difference and everything. So I'm not very interested in Hong Kong, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I know is from the movies and shows, they often talk about the uh, Lion Rock spirit. Yeah. And after I came here, I think I sort of um, uh, feel about that spirit. Um, and uh, in summary, the spirit is about if you work hard today and uh, you will be, uh, you will play hard tomorrow. Like you can feel <laughs> the, 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 the sense there. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So if you work hard yes. today, you, you, you can play, play hard, hard tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, play like hard tomorrow. Though. Yeah. If you summary that. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow, so, I really so, love that spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I don't know. That's uh, yes, other, it, uh huh. Yeah. Let's ask other people. Do well, they think, agree with this? Um, think, yes, Judan. <laughs> well, I think uh, Lion Rock Spirit is kind of a tradition in Hong Kong um, because uh, many Hong Kong people have positive uh, attitude towards life and work, and they will inspire each other with their selfless work and uh, uh, kind of 
compa- kind of uh, compassion. So um, if you work hard and you will see a bright future, so that's kind of yes. the spirit that of, uh, of yes. Hong Kong people will share with each other. I think from my from my <laughs> understanding. No, uh, that's uh, yes, yes. That's the long version of uh, explanation of work hard today and then play harder tomorrow. <laughs> Can we ask Noel to teach us how to say this line "rocket" in Cantonese? Please, I'm really eager to know that. So, Noel, how should we say this line "rock spirit" in Cantonese, Cantonese. first? Yes. Yeah, it's called C. Hi, 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 yes. What do you mean by hi? We don't even understand a word. And Judah is like, yeah, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> we three are Again, like, oh, please, oh, excuse me, we're so... <laughs> What's that? Excuse me, we didn't get even a word. We're so confused now. <laughs> Noel, again, please. Yes, so Lion Rock, like Si Ji San, it's actually a, a mountain in, in Hong Kong. So oh, it's actually yeah. back in, you know, uh, 1960, 1970. There were lots of people that actually just arrived Hong Kong from mainland China. Mm. And they were extremely poor but they believe in uh, something like a Chinese dream today, right? They believe like if they work hard, um, if, if they get, get the kids uh, well-educated, if they work um, um, like they, one day, they will be successful in Hong Kong. And that's actually turned out like in the 80s and 90s, Hong Kong economics was rising like extremely fast and, and it actually become dream come true. So so people were calling this like Si Ji San Zing San, the Lion Rocks uh, spirit. Si Ji San Zing San. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, Tang Wo, right. you will be the representative here and that you pronounce to, to Noel. So Noel, Si Ji San Zing San. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Almost, yeah. Like on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you give that score to Tang Bo Noel? 5, I guess? I- 10 out of 10. 10, oh, 10. Yeah, 10 Seriously? Yeah, That's not very fair, just because you know each other before. So, yeah, so this... Yeah, um, Mandarin. In Ch- I, I think you know Chinese. In Chinese Mandarin is shi zi shan jing shen, right? Yeah, shi zi shan jing shen. You know, mm-hmm. si, si, san, all of you know it, right? Si zi shan jing shen. Hi, oh, yeah, 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 sure, okay. Yeah. Do you know your Cantonese okay. is so good now? Wow, that's amazing. Hiya, hiya. <laughs> She's a language student. Not as good. No. <laughs> I always like when I watch Not those, as good as. Not as good as whom? As Tang Bo or no? <laughs> no, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Oh, maybe. Uh, I think they can, they can tell. They can tell. They can tell I'm not native Cantonese speaker, but I can speak some Cantonese sometimes when I go out uh, filming and interviewing people. So I can understand them. Yeah, from the. I think just. When I come here for for a year, I think just every day I just listen, listen. They're talking, talking. And someday, I just someday I think, oh, oh. I understand. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, spent- I mean, just when you guys, I think I'm sure when you guys come here to live in for two months, you guys will understand Cantonese at all. Oh. Don't worry about it. I oh. I spend a lot of time to tell the difference between. Doze and Mugai, because there's two ways of saying thank you in Cantonese. <laughs> Doze and Mugai. I don't know in what occasion should I use which one. I, I took a lot of time to get to know how to use it. So like Zhu Dan said, you can pick up this language in two months. But for you, in two months, you didn't even learn no, I cannot. the difference, the two ways I of saying thank you. Great, good for student. you, Tang <laughs> uh, You're so lucky that you're good looking. You know? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's, that's what you learn. Well, I think that's a compliment. Uh, it is a anyway. compliment. Yeah, okay. it's a compliment. So, you know, we've been talking about Hong Kong for almost like one, almost one hour time really flies. And I think there's so many, there's some misunderstanding, of course, but there's so many like the spirit, like the food, like everything. They're also mutual. It's understandable. So let, let's ask on the welfare. So as we said, there's still this kind of a weak sense of belongings among the young people in Hong Kong to the Chinese mainland. There's also, of course, a gap of mis- misunderstanding. How do you think this communication can be better enhanced in the future? Uh, lots of Hong Kong young people, they were getting information about China from, you know, social network, from news. Um, but it, the best way for them to get to know more about China and to, to avoid that misunderstanding is actually allow them to go to China to spend a few months working there, spend a few months living there. Um, and also, like, right now we have people like Cherry, like, um, they can actually send out those, <laughs> those amazing videos story to the people in Hong Kong. Um, so they will have more understanding. And, and I, I am very positive on this. I think Hong Kong, like, the best is yet to come. Mm. Uh, with the rising of China, um, uh, there are more opportunity for Hong Kong people. And the misunderstanding one day that will, that will be gone. 
Great. And so, I also think mm -hmm. I also think Hong Kong promotes biliteracy and the trilingualism in schools, uh, including Cantonese, English, and Mandarin. I think learning and mastering Mandarin well will promote mutual communication and understanding. What's your outlook for the video they're going to make, Cherry? Yeah. Because the video that you make really helped like us, the people in the Chinese mainland, to know better about Hong Kong mm -hmm. from different aspects of life. What's your future? Uh, I think many people mm -hmm. who can't travel to Hong Kong because of this COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, even some people who have never been to Hong Kong could know more about my living city through my vlogs. I mm. think everyone's impression of Hong Kong is that such successful people and the luxurious mansions in TVB dramas. However, I think um, we can make good use of the uh, video and, and media platform and to promote our uh, cities. Um, how, to say, how to say that? Our cities. The image of the region. <laughs> Beauty, maybe. Yeah. Actually, I think you're yeah, the big yeah, winner yeah. here yes, from the yeah. dialogue because I, I want to tell our viewers a little bit because before our live streaming officially kick off and we have Dominic talking secretly to Cherry, but actually all of us can hear that. And she's, he's <laughs> like, oh, Cherry, next time you make a video, can you take me? I can help you to shoot the video and help you hold the camera. You don't have to do it by yourself. Shoot. And Cherry really take it seriously. It's like, oh, really? Where are you? So and Dominic's like, oh, actually, I'm in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, do you really mean it? <laughs> It is too embarrassing. Do you really it want to? Never mind. You can you can come back Hong Kong. You come back Hong Kong and help me to shoot 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 the video. Just keep it under secretly. You know. You know that. Uh, oh, now it's impossible to keep it secretly. We're still live streaming this dialogue, so now everything is on record. You have to do that when you go back to Hong Kong. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, remember, no okay. secret in front of Zoe. I remember. Oh, seriously? <laughs> That's not a compliment. But Dominic, seriously, if you could one day work with Cherry together on a short video about Hong Kong, what kind of thing do you want to present to, I don't know, your students, your friends here in the Chinese mainland through that video? You know, I, you know, as since I know Cherry just said she raised in Sichuan province, and now I'm currently studying Sichuan Hua. So really? um, let me just introduce some mainland language, local language to other Hong Kong people. Like I'm now currently studying Sichuan Hua. <laughs> oh you my know, because you have much there. time to to spend. It looks like. So political science is not too hard for you, huh? You still have free time to learn Sichuan Hua. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I think Mandarin is the most important thing we can uh, study. <laughs> you know, I'm now currently learning the alphabet from King In, like R O E. I know that's quite important for a Hong Kong child to study this. You know, I have done this learning when I was in kindergarten, but I'm now so regret because I now I cannot cannot communicate with other normally like how to pronounce the, these Mandarin accurately. So I think King In. It's so much important to yes, introduce in Hong Kong. Yes, mm. yes. You, you know, I have a younger sister. She, she is six years old and she study uh, the traditional words and, the, and she doesn't know the uh, simp simplified words. Oh. You know that? Yeah, the simplified, yeah. yes, the simplified Chinese. Simplified. Let's ask other guests about, yes, Judan, yes. Yeah, I want to say um, I really like. I actually I really like Cherry, and I, I, I think I follow her um, since the very beginning. I like her too. Last year, yeah, because you know, um, I I watched her video for a lot uh, for many times. Like she shared that her life with her sister and uh, brother, brother, right? yeah, and, and mom, she, yes, mm -hmm. and, and friends, uh, yeah, mother, yeah. and yes, and like uh, the daily life in Hong Kong and. Uh, your attitude is kind of positive to the society, to positive to the future. To always like uh, be bright in your heart. I think um, you are that kind of girl who is really um, who is very real, you know. So yeah. uh, I think that's why many Chinese mainland people like you because through you they see a different kind of uh, young people, uh, which quite totally different from they've seen back in 2019, right? Mm -hmm. And I think today, like like Cherry, like Dominic, like No, they are representing the real young Hong Kong people, right? Yeah. So 
I hope, yeah, I hope Terry just, yeah, do more videos, okay? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. We'll looking forward to that. And what makes it even more real is next time maybe Judan or Noel or other guests, all of us can join Terry for her videos. We can well, be the guest there, yeah. except yeah. Dominic. He's been so fake. I don't know if he really <laughs> meant it for Terry. <laughs> My can- pleasure. Really? Why? Why? So, Dominic, you'll be carrying the the camera, and we'll just be good looking and cute on air. Will that be good? <laughs> so, before we wrap up, so for the two guests here, do you have any questions for the guests? They're yeah, ready I have for any question. top questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll do my best. I have one question for Noel because mm-hmm. you were born and raised in Hong Kong. So uh, we talked about our first impression of Hong Kong. So I really want to know what's your first impression of the Chinese mainland and over the years, what events and what items and what stuff has made that impression changed? How, how much has been changed? That's a um, tough one. Actually, when I first, like my very first time I went to China, it was like many, many years ago. I still remember Xinjiang was full of farmland. There's a lot of farmer there. So my, my first impression was like mainland China was pretty poor, right? But what really changed me is actually was the Olympic Games in 2008. Oh. When I see all this like spirit, uh, the, uh, the sports spirit, when I see all this development, when I see how all these like Chinese people like me, like all put together all the effort, energy, power into making a great game to show how the world that we have changed, we have developed. And that really triggered me and, and, and reflect me as a Chinese, like Hong Kong Chinese. Yeah. Are you... Yeah, Happy I, lo- I, I love answer? my question, and I like his answers even better. <laughs> yeah. So the Olympic <laughs> is the game changing here. But the first thing is you have to come here and to explore yourself with your yeah. own eyes, with your experiences, stories, right? Yeah, mm. I'm kind of uh, old school people. Like, oh come uh, on, you know, don't always I, say that. When it come comes on. to communication, old what I what I old. think of <laughs> what I think of is you know sit down face to face and talk. That's yeah. the best way out for communication improvement. Exactly. But now things have changed. We have social media, like Ch- what Cherry has been doing. So we don't mm-hmm. really have to you know you know come over here. Get together we have social media we have you know our own video works we have dialogues like this yes, one exactly that's yeah. another very Brings effective way for us to you know get to know each other much much better than before mm-hmm. yeah exactly so i think with that we're going to wrap up today's dialogue so many people call hong kong as the borough of orient and stability and safety are the cornerstone of the region's prosperity well of course hong kong has experienced some ups and downs some challenges but we believe as we will discuss today is resilience this kind of line rock spirit it can really help the region to to prosper and to regain its momentum and to dust off the um, the kind of you know the those shine on shine spirits on its pearl. So I like to thank you again to our guests who joined us today and for sharing with us their experiences and their wonderful stories. And big thank you to our followers on various social platforms. That we'll have more to come in the following weeks. So goodbye and have a good night. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you for your time and your insights. Really appreciated. Bye. Thank Thank you. you Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Um, By the way, can I? Can I?